The goal for this segment is to lay the groundwork for the memory game logic that we'll write. And the key observation here is that every memory card will have an associated state. So for example, a memory card can either be face up, which means that the image is showing, or it can be face down, which is the default state in how the game starts. And so in order to capture all of that, we're gonna create a data class in Kotlin representing one memory card. So open up the project tool window and inside of the models directory, let's create a new Kotlin file called memory card. This is going to be a data class. And the objective here is we want to list out every attribute of a memory card. So first off, it's we're going to capture the idea of an identifier for the card. This represents the uniqueness of the memory icon, which is the underlying resource ID integer of the memory card. And this is going to be of type int because the actual identifier is going to be a drawable resource that we defined earlier. The second attribute of a memory card is whether it's face up or face down. So we're going to define another attribute called is face up, which will be a Boolean. And this will initially be false because everything will start out, all memory cards will start out face down. There's an important distinction here of val versus var. A val is something which once it's set, the value of it can't be changed. Whereas var means that the value can be changed. During the course of a memory game, we'll be flipping cards over which means that the is face up property will change over time and therefore it has to be a var. On the other hand, the memory card identifier will never change once it's set. So that's why we made that a val. There's one more attribute of the memory card, which is is matched. And that represents if this memory card has found its corresponding pair. And as you play the game, you're going to be matching up cards. And when you've matched everything up, you have won the game. And so this is also going to be a var is matched and it'll be a, be a Boolean with initial value of false. Okay, so now that we have this data class in manactivity.kotlin, each randomized image that we have, this list of images that make up the memory game, each of those will correspond to one memory card. And I wanna create a list of these memory cards. And the way we'll do that is we're going to utilize the map function on randomized images. And what that does is for every element of randomized images, we're going to do an operation and create a new list. We're going to transform randomized images into a new list. In particular, create a new memory card object. We're going to call the constructor memory card. This takes in three parameters that we just defined. First is, it, is the identifier, and that will be the current randomized image that we're mapping over. And we refer to that as it. And then there are two more parameters here. One which is is face up, and third is is matched. Because we define a, a default value for is face up and is matched, we actually don't need to specify it here. So this can be as simple as randomized images map memory card of it. And this is now going to return to us a list of memory cards. And instead of passing in the list of randomized images, I instead will will want to pass in the list of memory cards. So let's update the third parameter of the adapter to be of type memory card. Go into memory, let's go into the adapter and change this to be just cards. Now we can actually start doing something interesting with setting the image resource. By default, the image resource should be face down. It should be the default image. And only if the card is face up do we want to show the corresponding image. And so here, what we're gonna do is grab the card at that position and check, is it face up or not? And if it is face up, then we want to show the drawable image. So we'll call cards position and then pass in the identifier. And otherwise we want to pass in the default icon, which is the face down. And that will be r.drawable dot ic launcher background. And one thing we can do just to make this a little bit cleaner is save the variable of cards position into a local variable. So what we're saying here is that if the memory card is face up, then we will use that as the image. Otherwise, we'll use the background. So if we try this now, we should see a change such that all the cards are face down initially. And the next step is when we actually tap on one of these, we would like to be able to toggle or switch the value of this property is face up.
before doing that, one more thing I'd like to do is have a separate class which will encapsulate all the logic for the memory game. So right now we have a data class which represents one memory card, but there's also a notion of the game itself has some state and we would like to be able to maintain that in, in a class as well. And so we're gonna again go back into the same directory which has memory card, the models class, and let's define a new column file called memory game. And this memory game is going to take in the board size and we wanna delegate responsibility of creating all the cards into the memory game. That shouldn't happen in the main activity, that should actually happen inside of the memory game. And so let's add in as a constructor the board size here. The cards are going to be a member variable in this class. I'm also going to have a couple more, which we're going to add uh, over time. But to start out with, we're going to have one, which is num pairs found. And this is going to be zero. When you start out the game, you have found no pairs. In the constructor of the memory game, we're going to do the work to populate these list of memory cards. I'm going to add this in the init block. And the work we're going to do here is exactly the work that we already did over here. So I'm going to copy all this. The idea is that we are constructing the list of cards based on the board size. We are picking some random Im images and then based on that, creating a memory card data class. So now all we need to do is construct our memory game. And the third parameter of memory board adapter should be the list of cards, which we can now get a reference to using the cards property of the game. Awesome, so again, there's no functional change here. All we're doing is kind of moving some code around so it's cleaner to understand where we'll add logic in the future. The last thing I wanna do is changing the state of a memory card when we tap on it. Going into the memory board adapter, here is where we are getting notified of a click on an image button. And we would like to notify the main activity of this click so then the main activity can then tell the memory game class that the user has taken some action and we should update the state appropriately. And so the standard pattern for doing this is to define an interface. So let's do that up here. It'll be interface card click listener. And this is going to have one method called on card clicked. And it's going to take in a position which is of type int. And the reason why we're defining this interface is because whoever constructs the memory board adapter, it will be their responsibility to now pass in an instance of this interface. And so we're going to add one more variable in the constructor called card click listener. And this is of type card click listener. And now when an image is clicked, we are going to invoke this method on the interface. So I'll say card click listener dot on card clicked with this position. Well, and so now back in the main activity, we're going to get an error right here because we haven't passed in card click listener object. And the way we'll do that is by writing the word object and specifying we want to create an anonymous class which is of type card click listener. And here Android Studio can help us with this red underline under object. Android Studio tells us, hey, this is the interface. So you, in order to implement this, you have to override this one method on card clicked. And so now here is where we can add the logic for toggling the is face up property of this card. So for now, I'm just gonna put a log statement here just to make sure that we are able to actually get notified of the card click back in main activity. And then we need to define a tag for this. Let's do that. All right, let's run it. So we're not expecting any functional change, but now if we open up Logcat, so now we're seeing two log messages every time we click on one of the cards. The first one is coming from the memory board adapter, and the second one is main activity being notified of this card click. Um, at the same position. So in the next segment, we're actually going to write the game logic for being able to flip over the card and also create matches. 
So if you're enjoying this, please like this video. It helps out the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. See you then.